of Christ and the glory that would follow. In Isaiah chapter 53, we read those words about Jesus Christ, that he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And Isaiah spoke of Jesus Christ's sufferings, that he would be a suffering Messiah before he came back as a glorified Messiah. The Jews looked for a Messiah who would overthrow the Roman Empire for them. They looked for a Messiah who was a political figure. But they didn't understand the scriptures. You say, why didn't the Jews believe on Jesus Christ when he came? Because God had given them a judicial blindness. Their eyes were blinded that they could not see him until the fullness of the Gentiles come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then God would visit the Jews again. And that's why we read in the Bible that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And then shall it return to the Jews. And that's why there is a blindness over the Jews today. Because God has opened up his salvation to the Gentiles. Listen, listen. And that is a benefit listen. for you and I, whether you be English, whether you be Chinese, for you. whether you be Arabic, for um, whether you be Jew, God has opened up listen, the salvation. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 His salvation has been opened up listen, to the yeah, Gentiles. Yeah, yeah. And that is why I'm a saved person today. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross Allah, for my sin, for the sins of both Jew and Gentile. And because God has given his salvation to the Gentiles, that's why so many people, 93 million Chinese, have been saved from their sins. They've been born again because God has opened up his salvation to the ends of the earth as it was always written in the Torah, in the Old Testament of the Bible, God said he would visit the Gentiles, that when Israel rejected him, that the Gentiles would come to believe on him. And the Bible tells us in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, that though many rejected him, he came to his own, and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, or not of blood, not of their pedigree, but because they were born of God. And the word was made flesh, the word that created the heaven and the earth, that word became flesh and lived among us. That is the wonderful salvation that we have. The God who spoke the worlds into existence in the beginning by his beloved son, by his word, the Lord Jesus Christ. The word was made flesh and lived among us. The word became one of us because God is absolutely free. You see, these religions you're misquoting can, can the scripture you Matthew, out of context. Matthew 15, 24. Can you read Matthew 15, 24? Deuteronomy says God is not a man that he should lie. Can you read Matthew 15, 24? Nor the son of man that he should repent. But it doesn't say God is not a man. And the great thing about our God is that he is absolutely free. That's why when God revealed himself to Moses, he said, I am that I am. God is free to be whatever he wants to be and if God chooses to clothe himself with humanity in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ that's because God is absolutely free some of your religions confine God to your own mind and that's why God is no bigger than your own brain but our God is in the heavens and the oneness of God is much bigger than you conceive it to be. The oneness of God is a compound 
unity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As the Jews believe, the Tetragrammaton, that is who God is, the I am that I am. And God has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you can never know God. There are those of you who think you know God, you he think you like believe you. in the right God, God but like you, you cannot know God apart from Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is, is the God. only God. one who ever came down from heaven God God. to reveal God to us. And Jesus himself said, no man knows the Father but the Son, and who to whoever the Son will reveal him to. No man knows God except the God? Son of God. Well, and God? only the Son of God well, can reveal God, God um, the Father to you. Well, Jesus God? Christ said, no man knows the Son but the Father. The only one who knows Jesus Christ, the Son, perfectly is the Father. And no man knows the Father except the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Now in God? these words of Isaiah, is Isaiah God? chapter 26. What color is God? Don't ask foolish no. questions. It's all over your church. In Isaiah chapter you know 26, we read, Come, come my people. In China, he's Chinese. Come my people. Chinese. Enter thou no, 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 into no, no, no. thy chambers question, question. and shut thy doors about thee. What color is Hide God? thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation or the wrath be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. God's wrath, you've no idea of the wrath of God. When Jesus Christ came the first time, he came in mercy, he came in grace, he came to forgive sin. But when he comes again, we are told of the wrath of the Lamb. We are told in the second Psalm that you should kiss the Son of God, lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. And you must put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. You have no idea of the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath, the anger of God against sin. Some of you have no idea of how great the God's anger is. But we have mercy today. And the reason we have mercy today is because Jesus Christ came into this world as man. You say, why did he come as man? Why did God take on humanity? The reason why God took on humanity was this. Because by man came sin. The first man, Adam, died because of sin. Death came because of sin. And so it was necessary that sin and death, which was the penalty for sin, be paid not by man's sinfulness, because man can never pay off the debt for his sin, but only the infinite and eternal Son of God could pay the penalty that God required for sin. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive, all shall be born again. As in Adam all die, so by the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. And today Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen from the dead. You say, Oh, I'm frightened of death. Of course you should be frightened of death. Because if you knew what was going to happen after death, you'd fear death. Because after death comes the judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. There is a judgment 
for every action and every word and every thought that you have ever had. And you will stand before this judge of all the earth. And the judge of all the earth is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And if you die in your sin, you will be judged. If you die without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, having pardoned your sins, you will be forever separated from God. That's what death is, is separation from the love of God, from the holiness of God, from the justice and the righteousness and the purity of God. To be separated from God forever is the worst worst torment that you could ever imagine. You think of the worst things that have ever happened in your life and none of them, none of them compare with the vengeance of eternal fire that shall be poured out upon all them that do not know God and have not been born again of the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ said, you must be born again. You must be made alive because you are all dead in your trespasses and sins. And because you are dead, only God can bring you to life again. Only God can make you alive again. Because you need to be born again. You need to be saved from your sin. And there is only one savior of sinners. There is only one name under heaven given among men, whereby you must be saved. And it is the name of Yehoshua. Jesus Christ, the Lord, God our Saviour, He is the only Saviour of sinners. And there is no other Saviour. You need to be saved. You see, my friend, because man has sinned against God, man has incurred the judgment of God against sin. And that is separation from God. And because Jesus Christ was willing to go to that place of separation. That's how you can return to God. That's how you can be reconciled to God. Because God has made a way for you to come back to Him. Because there is a mediator. There is a mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. The only mediator. The only one who is both God and man. If Jesus Christ had not been both God and man, then man could never be saved. But because he is God, our Savior, he came as the God-man, fully God and fully man. And he came to save the world. He came to reconcile God and man together again. Man and God are separated. Man is separated from God because of his sin. And Jesus Christ has come to bind God and man together again because he is fully God and fully man. He's not half God and half man. He's all God. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in Jesus Christ. And we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. We are accepted in Jesus Christ who is the beloved and eternal Son of God. He is the one who came from eternity. Had he been a mere man, he could never have suffered for sin on the cross of Calvary. Had Jesus Christ just been a prophet, he could not have borne the eternal wrath of God against sin in his own holy body. But because he is from eternity, when he was on the cross and cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's because he was bearing the judgment of Almighty God against sin. And only he who is infinite, only he who is from eternity, could bear the eternal wrath of God against sin. Because he alone is the eternal word of God, the eternal son of God. And you need the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. You need a savior on your deathbed. You won't need a comedian. You won't need a politician. A psychiatrist or a doctor cannot help you on your deathbed. Only Jesus Christ can do sinners good. Only he can take you to heaven because he has gone into heaven. He has overcome the world. He died 
and he rose again from the dead so that he might prepare a place in heaven for all those who believe on him. That is the good news of salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents more than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He didn't come to call the righteous or those who think they're good enough as they are. He came to call sinners to repentance. He came for the unlovely. He came for the ugly. He came for the depraved. He came for sinners. That's why he delighted in eating and drinking with tax collectors and with prostitutes because they were the ones who knew they needed to be saved. Many of you, you think you're good enough as you are. You think your religion is sufficient, but it's not. You are desperate sinners without God. And unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins and you will go to hell and nobody can help you on your deathbed. Only Jesus Christ can avail you on your deathbed. But he doesn't say wait until you die. God says no. God doesn't speak in the future. God doesn't say you can put it off till tomorrow. No, God says today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't harden your heart against this great loving God who has given his son to be our savior. Don't harden your heart. Repent of your sin because God commands all men everywhere to repent, to turn away from their sin. Repent of your fornication. Repent of your adultery. Repent of your sexual immorality. Any of you young people who are having sexual relations outside marriage, it's fornication. The Bible condemns it. You may say, I don't want to listen to that. Well, on the day of judgment, you'll regret that you never repented of your fornication. You'll repent that you never repented of your drug addiction and your alcoholism and your vanity. The fashion of this world is, many of you, you're following the fashion of this world and the fashion of this world is passing away. Where will your fashion be on the day of judgment? Nowhere. You can appear before God in the most fashionable clothes that you like, but that will not take away your sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for the forgiveness of sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than the blood of Abel that spoke for revenge. When Cain killed Abel, his brother, Abel's blood cried from the ground for revenge. But the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross cries pardon, forgiveness, mercy, loving kindness. God is compassionate towards sinners. God does not desire the death of a sinner, but rather that he might turn from his wickedness and live. That's what God desires. God's long suffering is exercised towards you today because he's very long suffering. If God said, that's it, I'm gonna stop the world now. No more, nobody's gonna be saved anymore. You would all be damned. But because of God's grace and kindness and long suffering, he does not destroy this world. He does not say the end is come so that you might repent of your sins, so that you might come back to Christ again, that you might be reconciled to God. That's the love of God. You see, God is not like a man. God doesn't lie. God never changes. That's why we can trust in him. And the Bible tells us Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. If God changed according to your works, if God changed according to the good things or the bad things that you do, then God would be a changeable God. But God does not change. God is the same. He changes not. And that's why if you believe that your good works or your good deeds could justify you before this holy God, then my dear friends, God would be changeable. God would change according to whether you did good or evil. And God does not change. God's salvation is on the basis of his son having died for sin, the just for the unjust, 
that he might reconcile us to God. God's salvation is not on the basis of your good works or your bad works. God's salvation is on the basis of Jesus Christ, our righteousness. That is the only ground that God will accept you on, the ground of the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. When God met with Moses at the burning bush, God said to Moses, do not draw nigh here. Take your shoes from off your feet, for the place whereon you stand is holy ground. And Isaiah said, how beautiful are the feet of him that brings good tidings of great things. John the Baptist said that he was not worthy even to untie the buckle of the Lord Jesus Christ's sandals because he knew that he was a sinner. And Jesus Christ is the one who has come from heaven. He is the God-man. He is the one God who has been revealed in humanity because God is absolutely free to take on humanity if he chooses to. And he did that in the person of Jesus Christ so that he might save the world. Man had sinned against God and that's why death came. So God alone can provide the remedy. Man cannot provide the remedy because man was the transgressor. It's God who alone has provided the remedy and the remedy that God has provided, the sacrifice that God has made for sin is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. He is the one who was willing to give his life a sacrifice, a ransom for many. That's why Jesus Christ came, not to be glorified. He came to glorify his Father. That's why everything he did, he pointed to the Father. And everything the Father did, he pointed to his Son. And everything the Son does, he points to the Holy Spirit, who is to come. And so when Jesus Christ walked this earth, he came into the world for the express purpose of dying, of giving himself, dying on the cross as a sacrifice, as a korban, as a sacrifice for sin. God's sacrifice. Your sacrifices aren't good enough for God. All your best works that you can do can never reach this high and infinitely holy God. It is God who has come down to our level in the person of Jesus Christ so that you might be saved, so that you might believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, saved from your sin. If, if you could have been saved, by keeping the Ten Commandments or by your good works, then Jesus Christ would never have come. But because we cannot be saved by any work that we have done, it was necessary for his perfect work because he was without sin. He was born of the Virgin Mary and in him there was no sin. That's why he alone can pay the penalty for your sin and my sin because he alone is without sin. He alone never sin. In fact, when Jesus Christ walked this earth, he said, the God of this world, the prince of this world, Satan, has nothing in me. There was nothing in Jesus Christ that would agree to sin. And Jesus Christ is holy and harmless and undefiled and separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. And he came into this world of sin to reveal God to as many as God had given to him. And I'm so glad that he revealed himself to me. I'm so glad that even if I were the greatest sinner and the only sinner and the only man on this earth, that Jesus Christ would have come and died for one sinner. Because one with God is a majority. God comes to save sinners. And the salvation of sinners is through Jesus Christ our Lord. And salvation is of God is not of man, is not man who can provide a sacrifice that is good enough for God. It is God who has provided the sacrifice that is required for sin. It has to be a perfect, an infinitely perfect sacrifice. And Jesus Christ is that infinitely perfect sacrifice because Jesus Christ came from eternity, from infinity. That's why he alone could bear the infinite wrath 
of a holy God against sin when he was made a curse for us on the tree, on Calvary's tree. He was willing to be made a curse for us so that we might be blessed forevermore by faith in him. He was willing to be set at naught. He was willing to go down into death and even the death of the cross. And so God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth and of things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord the greatest man who ever lived the greatest socialist the greatest servant the greatest friend that you could ever have is the Lord Jesus Christ and he came in love he came in mercy he came in kindness he came to give his life he didn't come to take life he came to give life as a ransom for many and when he had finished the work that God the Father gave him to do he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God and when a person sits down at the end of their working day they rest they've come to rest and when Jesus Christ had finished the work that God required of man under the law and God required a perfect obedience to his moral law when Jesus Christ had finished that work he said father it is finished I have finished the work which you gave me to do and on the cross when Jesus died on the cross he said it is finished he had finished the work that he had been given to do he had completed everything that was required of man under the law Jesus Christ rendered a perfect obedience to God the Father when he came into the world as the Son of Man God the Son and because of his perfect obedience many have been justified by the obedience of one Romans tells us by the obedience of one many have been declared righteous by one man's obedience by the disobedience of Adam the whole world was made sinful but by the obedience of one Jesus Christ many have been made righteous many have been declared righteous because of his obedience your obedience is not enough you cannot obey the law of God perfectly but Jesus Christ has obeyed it perfectly that's why when you believe in him with all your heart you are washed clean you are as clean as the driven snow because of your faith in the finished work of Calvary the finished work of the cross when Jesus Christ died on the cross he was made a curse for us he was willing to be set at naught having kept the law of God perfectly he was willing to be made a curse for us breaking the law of God he was willing to go to the place of punishment and execution out of our sins it was our sins that deserved punishment and execution but Jesus Christ was willing to die in the place of sinners he was willing to hang on the tree because it's written in the Jewish law cursed is everyone that hangs upon the tree and Jesus Christ was made a curse for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and having been made a curse for us and having gone down into death and having suffered a humiliating and agonizing separation from God the Father he then lay in the tomb and on the third day he rose again from the dead he rose again from the dead as it was written of him David in the Psalms says you will not leave my soul in hell neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption and Jesus Christ never saw corruption his body never decayed in the tomb in the grave he walked out of the tomb because there was no sin in him there was nothing to hold him in the grave there was nothing to hold him in death he could only rise from the dead he could only ascend up where he was before because he had come into the world clothed himself with humanity to pay the penalty for sin then took off his white garments of humanity and clothed himself with the glory of the Father again. 
And my dear friends, that's the whole story of salvation. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is the gift of God. It's not of works. It's not how much money you've got. Everlasting life is God's gift. Jesus Christ said, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And when you're born again of the eternal spirit of God, you can never be lost. You're born again for all eternity. You're saved forever. And that is the great news of this everlasting gospel. We ask you, we beseech you, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We have been reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Now we are saying, in place of Jesus Christ, be ye reconciled to God. Come back to God again. Come back home. Unless you're a pig, you return to your wallowing in the mire. Unless you're a dog, you return to your vomit. And if you're a sheep, you'll follow the shepherd. 